Modern Warfare 3 has just been officially revealed, and I thought I'd bring you all the information that I can about this game, whether that's campaign, multiplayer, zombies, and anything else, into one video. So, for the next 15 minutes, be ready to receive all of that intel. I'll be covering Modern Warfare 3 in its entirety here on the channel, so get subscribed if you aren't already, click that subscribe button so that you're ready for all of that content, and at the same time you'll be helping us on the way to 1 million subscribers. Can we do it this year? Well with your help we definitely can. Let's start with the campaign. Sledgehammer Games is working with Infinity Ward to continue the story from Modern Warfare 2, setting up MW3 as a direct sequel. You've seen the reveal trailer by now, so you'll have seen all the old Verdansk locations of prison and stadium featured pretty prominently, and that's no mistake. These are going to be locations that you visit in the campaign for Modern Warfare 3, and potentially in other ways as well. You can expect all the usual cinematic moments from Task Force 141 throughout the campaign, but there's something new happening this time. Open combat missions. Sledgehammer is looking to get some variety into the campaign this time around, to try and get you to complete missions multiple times. Usually, most people play the campaign once and then that's it, so it becomes a very singular piece of content. This time around, there will be different ways to play missions. One example that's been shared is basically going loud during a mission, not playing it stealthy, and the decision to do that changes the way the mission plays out. Then you could play super stealth if you wanted to, you could sort of suppressor up your weapon, you could even whack on some night vision goggles, never come into contact with any of the AI and the other characters, and you can complete the mission that way if you want to. So it sounds like they're implementing support for other playstyles rather than just one fixed way to play every single mission, which I suppose is a good thing. There's also a new feature that's going to allow you to save weapons that you loot during the campaign to use on a second run on different missions. So you'll be able to take weapons from later on in the campaign, go back in time and play some of those earlier missions near the start and then complete them in a different way if you want to. There is also going to be one week's early access to the campaign, I believe, if you pre-order Modern Warfare 3. That's totally up to you if you want to pre-order the game, of course. But that means there will be seven days before multiplayer launches where you could play the campaign and you could spend a bunch of time completing the missions in different ways rather than just the standard change the difficulty meme. Right, next up is Zombies. This will be the first time we've seen Zombies in the Modern Warfare universe and the mode is being developed and supported by Treyarch. So lots of those mechanics and systems that you're used to from the Black Ops Zombies modes, they're going to be present here in Modern Warfare 3. But the actual Zombies offering is quite a bit different. Things like wall buys, perks, all that jazz is going to be there though, so it's still going to feel familiar to you. According to the official blog, this is going to be the largest Call of Duty Zombies map ever made, and with the mode likely taking place on the new Warzone map, that doesn't surprise me. The big twist in this Zombies experience though, is it's going full PvE with multiple teams on the map at the same time. So we're going to see 24 players max, it's going to be split into quads, so that's six teams of four. You're all going to spawn into each round, and then you can either work as your group of four, or you could work together with other squads to complete missions, explore the map and all of the secrets that are in it, and then you extract at the end of the round. So it sounds a little bit like DMZ currently in Modern Warfare 2, but the big kicker is that there is no PvP whatsoever. All of your interactions with other players, they're going to be friendly ones. You're likely going to have to work with other teams on the map to complete a bunch of missions, maybe fight zombie bosses together or work out puzzles, or go off and help other teams if they're getting overrun by some of the huge hordes of zombies that can be present. You'll be able to do all of the usual zombies things, similar to Outbreak in Black Ops Cold War, so you loot up your character, you go and gain your perks, you collect all the weapons and equipment that you want to use, you can pack a bunch of weapons, you can go to the store and purchase items, and then the main aim is to extract all of that at the end of the round, all of the loot that you've gained, and you secure it for a future run if you extract. You'll then be able to keep all of these items in an out-of-game stash as gear for the next time that you want to infill onto the Zombies game mode. This again to me screams DMZ, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if the game mode is using the DMZ underpinnings that we have in Modern Warfare 2. We've got other real players on the map, we've got the mission structure, the AI systems to create these massive hordes of zombies. The phrase has already got coined on Twitter almost instantly. People are calling this DM Zombies. 
Now, according to J-God, the overall match time limit is an hour, and the difficulty of the zombies ramps up the closer you get to the center of the map. So perhaps this feature of extracting all your items to get more and more powerful stuff in your inventory so that you can then spawn back in, you've got gear to fight those harder bosses and AI as you get closer and closer. It kind of makes sense in that regard. According to J-God again, there was no mention whatsoever of DMZ during his time with speaking to the developers. So I'm not really sure what this zombie extraction PvE mode means for DMZ, the extraction PvPvE mode means right now. But I'm assuming as we get closer to the launch of Modern Warfare 3, we'll get more granular details about zombies, maybe about what's going to happen to DMZ, about Warzone, the next map and the features of it. I'm sure we're going to get more and more informed as time goes on. Now, let's talk about multiplayer. I know a lot of you will be wanting to hear about this stuff since it forms the basis of the game that you'll be playing for the next 12 months. And I know for a fact that the core multiplayer 6v6 kind of thing in Modern Warfare 2 hasn't exactly been the most well-received or the most plentiful over the season's worth of content that we've got for the game. Right off the bat, though, let's confirm. There's going to be 20 maps for multiplayer at launch. 16 of those are going to be the maps from Modern Warfare 2 2009. So absolute bangers like Terminal, Afghan, Wasteland Favela, all of those 16 are taken from Modern Warfare 2 2009 and they've been rebuilt from scratch and they're identical to the ones from the original Modern Warfare 2. So you're going to be able to relive some of those just insane childhood moments. But this time, you can view it in 4K if you've got a 4K monitor with a wider FOV if you want to. And of course, it won't all be washed out beige and grey because we have more colours in our games now than what we did back in 2009. Plus, there's over 12 more core multiplayer maps coming as part of the seasons in the live service. So Sledgehammer are going all in on the multiplayer in this game. If you didn't think it was well supported in Modern Warfare 2, well, it looks like Modern Warfare 3, you guys are going to get your wish. Beyond those 16 core multiplayer maps, there are going to be three ground war large-scale battle maps at launch as well that will support those larger game modes, just like Modern Warfare 2. And then the final 20th map is the returning war game mode map that we last saw in COD World War 2. Apparently, it's a little bit different than last time, but apparently it's a huge map that has been specifically made for this war game mode. And it's been confirmed that on day one, Hardcore is going to be available as a game mode in Modern Warfare 3. So as soon as the game launches on November 10th, you can find the Hardcore playlist in the menu and you can play those original Modern Warfare 2 maps as much as you like with insanely short TTK if you want to. Great move, Sledgehammer Games. That means players that go for those camo grinds, they're probably going to get them a little bit faster than what they did in Modern Warfare 2 last year because that game didn't launch with Hardcore and instead we had that Tier 1 mode that I don't think many people really liked. So it's good to see that Sledgehammer are going back to an old way of doing things which worked great in the first place. Map voting is returning in Modern Warfare 3. That's going to give you the chance to try and skip past a map that you don't really like. We haven't seen this in Call of Duty for years now, so it's great to see it back. Traditional minimap is back with red dots on it if you fire an unsuppressed weapon. There is a silent movement perk in the game, although it's not really a perk. It's something slightly different, but that's going to make your footsteps very, very quiet. But from my understanding, not completely silent because apparently the Dead Silence field upgrade is still in Modern Warfare 3 and that will make you completely silent. So bear that in mind at the moment. That's not officially confirmed, but that's my understanding anyway. And then the health that we have in this game will sit at 150 at launch. That likely means a longer time to kill than what we've seen in Modern Warfare 2. Right now, base health in Warzone and DMZ is 150, but at launch it was 100. And this led to a lot of very, very super fast deaths and generally leaving people feeling like they've got no time to react in gunfights whatsoever. Sledgehammer is starting at 150 for Modern Warfare 3. This means there's a bit more room, I think, in the weapon balancing model to make sure that all weapons feel decent and they've got their own place, at least in theory anyway. There's a new customization system being built into Modern Warfare 3 that sort of expands on the gunsmith system and it incorporates the older PIC-10 system that was pioneered by the Black Ops series. There's also a new feature called Aftermarket Parts built into the weapon customization that will essentially allow you to completely modify how a weapon functions at its base core. 
there will be a special set of customization options that will allow you to change a weapon to suit your playstyle, constructing something that you want to use rather than being restricted by the standard weapon attachments. Now, an example that was given in the COD blog mentions customizing a machine gun into a bullpup configuration by placing a firing grip in front of the breech rather than behind it, which increases the mobility and the handling of the weapon without compromising the damage output. Now, this sounds like a really interesting system, and I'm actually quite interested to try it in the upcoming beta. And as an extra bit of info, these aftermarket parts are going to be part of a new progression path for the weapons and part of like a new challenge system, I think. So this is definitely something for those grinders out there. Kind of similar to how the weapon tuning system worked in Modern Warfare 2, where it was unlocked later on in all of the weapon progression. And really, it was just there for those people that wanted to get into the granular details of each gun. Most like normal players probably didn't really touch it, or if they did... Maybe they didn't quite understand what they were doing. Perhaps this is more of a simplified way of making some of those changes, but it's presented in an easier to digest way. We'll have to wait and see until we see it in gameplay, I guess. I mentioned the pick 10 system a little bit earlier, and that comes into play with a brand new way to build a class setup in Modern Warfare 3. Using military equipment like gloves, tactical vests, boots, and more. These items are going to have different perks attached to them, that will change how your operator behaves or what items they have access to. Now, I mentioned earlier that the silent movement perk in the game, that's built into one of these boot options. So if you don't want to have footstep sounds, choose whichever one that's called. I don't know if it's called Ninja, but there will be a perk in the game that makes your footsteps really quiet, and that will be attached to the boots in this new system. It's kind of like an evolution of Pick 10, but it's not a complete return to it because you're now able to pick different items alongside your weapon, tacticals, lethals, and that kind of thing. It kind of feels like Pick 10, but it's not Pick 10, if you know what I mean. And there's a brand new movement and firefight mechanic being added to the game called Tactical Stance. It's a middle ground between ADS and hip fire, and it's been built for close quarters gameplay. So, for example, if you enter a hallway, you can then toggle on Tac Stance to improve your weapon performance and win a gunfight. You'll unshoulder the weapon and then you hold it in front of you in a canted position, and you can then fire your weapon, but in tack stance, you're gonna trade weapon accuracy or improved mobility and handling. So that means more bullet spread than ADS, but not quite as much as hip fire, thus the middle ground that you've got here. Sledgehammer says it's perfect for aggressive players who like fighting close quarters, and by default, tack stance is built into the slide mechanic. So when you slide, tack stance will be turned on. And then lastly, to kind of sort of build into that sliding mechanic, we've got some massive, massive movement mechanic changes for Modern Warfare 3. I'm going to rattle these off from the blog for you now. You can, in Modern Warfare 3, cancel slide animations, i.e. slide cancel. But when you slide cancel, it does not reset your tack sprint. You can cancel partial reloads during an animation, i.e. reload cancel, to immediately return fire. You can mantle faster in Modern Warfare 3, and you can mantle whilst sprinting. And by extension, I believe ledge grabbing has been removed from Modern Warfare 3. Tax sprint durations have been increased up from their Modern Warfare 2 levels, and the exact duration of those tax sprint durations are dependent on what weapon you're using. And then finally, tax sprint recharges during normal sprinting animations. I told you these were massive movement buffs. They are absolutely huge. Coming from Modern Warfare 2, which was one of the least responsive and smooth systems we've had for a long time, I think this is going to feel like a breath of fresh air to most Call of Duty players out there. It's nice to see Sledgehammer take a more classic approach to movement here, and it does tie in very nicely with all that nostalgic content that we're seeing in Modern Warfare 3. Right now, I've got no Warzone information for you, and that extends to DMZ as well. I have no information on that whatsoever. We're supposedly going to get more information on all of that soon, plus more on Zombies, Campaign, and Multiplayer 2, the closer that we get to the beta and the launch of the game. So I will bring you that information here on the channel as it arrives. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you soon.